Welcome, welcome. I'm MTG Joe. Today we're going to be playing some Magic the Gathering Arena live on YouTube. Um, so what we're going to be doing is uh, continuing our series on the ultra budget, budget, and no budget builds. Uh, this gives people an option to see if you're starting out new, don't have a lot of wild cards, you can basically put this together really easy and then over time start building it. So if you haven't caught it already on our replays, um, everything's uploaded to my YouTube channel at MTG underscore Joe. We did one for Demir Control. So the starting deck had basically all uncommons and commons minus the dual lands and the one free mythic that you get as part of uh, the starter decks. From there we basically put together a couple other decks um, that all kind of built upon the existing archetype to eventually take us to a tier one deck. So I posted all the details on Reddit as well, give you some kind of the background, the ins and outs of the deck. So we're going to continue it and this time we're going to be building uh, the theme around Black White Aristocrats. So what Black White Aristocrats is, is a deck that is an old archetype of Aristocrats where you basically sacrifice your creatures for value. So we're playing a lot of like re re recurring or just like value creatures that we don't care if they die because it has an effect on the game. So really what we get the payoff for the most of and the card that we are missing in older sets was Cruel Celebrant. So this is basically a blood artist type card effect where whenever a, it or another creature or planeswalker we control dies, each opponent loses a life and we gain a life. So what we want is a board full of creatures, tokens, non-tokens, or the afterlife cards, that when they die, they come back, uh, or either with a token or it just deals damage. So we basically can get to a point where opponent can attack into our creatures, because if they die, then we get value that way, they can't block, and then uh, we can basically kill our opponent. Traditionally, these decks do have a sacrifice outlet. In this standard format, there hasn't really been a good one. Like, there's Priest of Forgotten Gods. I'm not really a big fan of it. I find it a little too slow. Um, in the past, we've had stuff like Cartel Aristocrat, Viscera Seer, just unconditional sack outlets, um, which are generally a little bit better to play in these types. So the deck itself, I can give you a quick overview. So the conditions here, everything in the deck is uncommon or common. So it's super cheap to build. The only exception are the dual lands. So we have Godless Shrine and Isolated Chapel. In a pinch, you can use Guild Gates. They're a little bit slower. We do want to play out on curve. Um, generally speaking, if there's an archetype or color that you like, dual lands are very important. If you can't play your spells on curve, it usually has an impact in terms of the effectiveness of your deck. So those are the only caveats. So we have Hunted Witness, which is a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. When it dies, it creates token. So it's effectively two bodies. Dusk Legion, Zealot, comes in, draws us a card, so effectively replaces it itself. Eternal Taskmaster was something I wanted to try out in this budget version. Uh, it's a 2-3 for 2. When it enters tapped, uh, when it attacks, we can pay 3 mana to basically bring a creature card back from the graveyard to our hand. So this is something interesting we could try out. It was pretty good and limited when I drafted a couple of these, so we'll give it a shot. Orzhov Enforcer is pretty much a Hunted Witness, but it'll give us a Spirit with the Afterlife mechanic. Also, it being a Death Touch creature can profitably trade up. Uh, Cruel Celebrant, as I mentioned, is kind of the linchpin of the deck. We have Imperious Oligarch, just another Afterlife threat. Cast Down is some removal along with Mortify. Uh, I also like Plague Crafter. There's a lot of Planeswalkers running around, so it's a way for us to interact with those. Uh, we don't have clean answers necessarily to Planeswalkers other than Plague Crafter and Conclave Tribunal. Uh, Minister of Obligation is another afterlife. So basically three bodies. Uh, Conclave Tribunal could basically cost almost zero mana if we have enough creatures out. Uh, gets rid of a lot of troublesome stuff. And then we have two Planeswalkers I want to try out. We have Angrath, Captain of Chaos. So this gives all our creatures menace, so it makes it easier for us to attack in. But it also creates either two bodies or one four power tough, like a zombie with the amass mechanic. And then we have Vraska Swarms Eminus. So its static ability is whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a player or planeswalker, put a 1 1 counter on it. So, main deck, it's really just the Orzhov Enforcer. But then there's also the minus ability, which creates black assassins, that whenever those tokens deal damage to a planeswalker, it could destroy it. So, that's another clean planeswalker answer. So these kind of give us reoccurring value um, without us having something like Liliana at Mythic. 
If you have the new Liliana Dreadhorde General, that would be something really good to throw in here as well. So you can kind of piece it together. The mana base is pretty standard. Um, the only cards that we're playing in addition is Memorial to Folly. This is very good in a creature deck, um, just to bring creatures back from your graveyard if you kind of flood out late game. Uh, in the sideboard, we have Duress uh, against Control, Danto Vanguard versus more of the Sweeper style decks. Uh, Moment of Craving versus Aggro. Uh, Dispark against like Teferi's Wilderness Reclamation, anything like that. Davriel against Control. Uh, I wanted to try out the Wander against like Burn decks that can't deal damage or creatures, as well as just more removal for the bigger stuff. And then the Eldest Reborn. This particular iteration gets hit pretty hard by Cryocarnarium. Um, so we'll probably end up playing it more so in best of one just to show it off. Uh, but we'll play a best of three first, and then go from there. Uh, let's just shuffle this up. Attack with 30 creatures. So we'll play traditional play, get a feel for it. Um, one card that's really good in these decks, once you start getting some upgrades, is the new Soren. So as we get started, um, if you're new to the channel, um, I'm MTG Joe. We play everything from tier one constructed decks to jank to brews. Um, I'm really active on the MTG Reddit uh, subreddit for Arena. Um, questions that can help out with deck builds. Uh, I like doing collective brews. Uh, but if you do enjoy the channel, uh, if you do enjoy the content, subscribing is a free and easy way to show your support to help me uh, continue to build out the channel. Um, it goes a long way to show your support. Um, if there's also any kind of build around ideas that you're interested in, let me know and we can go from there. So this hand, we're missing a white source, but we have a redraw with Dusk Legion and Orzhov Enforcer. Three Celebrants is really good. So this might be Gates. It might be just a budget constraint. Okay, so it's Grixis, Thought Erasure. Cool, to rest me. Opponent instantly concedes. Uh, so probably want Duresses. Davriel's Eldest Reborn. Okay. That's the only problem with playing on this rank. Like people just concede. Run it again. Like, if you're playing a Grixis control deck, I don't understand how you don't have, like, main board answers for something like uh, a weenie strategy. Like, Cryo Carnarium alone is probably really strong against us. Alright, so we'll run it back. We'll play first. Okay, so we'll keep this hand. This is a very, very good hand. Uh, generally speaking, I like to get out my threats first before playing out uh, Celebrants, just because it's the main target that usually comes. So, Witness on one. Uh, depending on what we draw, if we can draw... Okay, so we draw another land uh, against Sun Petal. Probably just play Zealot here. Okay, Tribunal's not bad if they play something like an Amara. We can just get rid of it. Okay, so Legion's landing. So here, let's just attack in with the one. They're likely not going to trade off the one because they want to flip Legion's landing. So here, they're going to just start deploying Celebrants. Next turn, we can play a land, play Celebrant and Conclave Tribunal, or play both Taskmaster and Celebrant, depending on what they play. This also nicely blocks the Vampire. Okay, 
So they do play a tribunal. Gets rid of Celebrant. We also have the option afterwards when the game gets kind of drawn out to Conclave the Conclave. So here I'm just going to deploy Outer Creatures. Next turn I'll probably Conclave that. Get it back. So here we do have basically... Okay, so they play Shalai. Uh, here... Just get rid of Shalai so we can keep attacking in. And I'm cool if they kill anything. Taskmaster could get it back next turn. Play this out tapped, say go. So we have a good amount of pressure. Uh, Tristani's pretty good here. So we'll see what we draw here. Ministrant. So we could cast down one of these, or we could just play Ministrant and get back a Dusk Legion Zealot. Probably go with that. Or just cast down. Because they'll double block here. Let's just do that. Want to try to draw into like a Mortify or something. So we'll gain some life. They, the fact they have lifelink is going to be difficult here. Okay, so they're going to blow up the Conclave. The wild wasn't yet. Draw and let's do this again. So that makes it a bit tough because we can't deal with the Trustani either. And we also can't pressure the Vivian. Okay, so let's draw with the Dusk's Legion. So here we'll just hold this to make it seem like we have something and then say go. If it wasn't for the lifelink, we have quite a no bit of the wilds like I do. damage. I'm just going to start throwing stuff at the opponent. Let them block. They'll gain two life a turn, but they're going to be taking a lot more. I think that's our only avenue of actually winning. We might have thrown the Taskmaster way too early. Ah, that's tough. The, the Trustani giving a lot of these like two toughness or a point of damage is pretty good for them. Okay, so Angrath does make the math a little interesting. Never seen water. If you want it, fight for it. So here I'm going to attack with everything. They can opt to double block some stuff. But hopefully we just get some tokens. So they double block there. They're going to gain two life. But take one. They take two. It's fine. And just end the turn. They're likely going to attack Angrath this turn. This is part of the reason why I liked Angrath in this build. Meet my newest friend. We're not really going to be able to pressure Vivian. We just need to try to kill them. Okay, so they have another Branch Walker. 
You can start adapting this to. Shalai giving a, a cast down is basically a dead card versus them. They could also turn on the Legion's Landing, which pretty much creates an endless stream of 2-2s. Two I'm going to trade with this. To get the life linker off the board. And then we're just gonna try to push in extra damage. Ram a new force free. So that nullifies the life link. They do they will be able to create a token here. Mortify might get us out of it. Get another celebrant and then just try to suicide everything in. I think that's the only way we kind of win. Uh, they do have mana for Danto. Okay. So I'm going to pass the turn here. So I want them to attack and then we can try to ambush them with the Conclave Tribunal. Come to me. Okay, Guild Mage, that's fine. Let's see if they just Alpha Strike. Interesting. We're gonna do it anyways. Let's block like this. So they're gonna gain two, take two. Opponent's being pretty conservative with the way they're attacking. There's also a play where we mortified this and then cast down like the token, but I don't think we're going to win that way. We need to use the Cruel Celebrants to try to get uh, some chip damage in. So the center's tap doesn't really do much. So is this a turn we can get back? Probably the Dusk Mantle. Okay, so they power up the team. It's probably lethal regardless. They have two they yeah, they could gain six life. We're just going to go to game two here. Like our creatures will die, but they're going to... So in this matchup... Trostani's a 3-4, so let's go to Sparks. Uh, let's go... Moment of Cravings. Eldest Reborn's not that good. The Wander is probably not that good. So what do we want to get rid of here? Probably Plague Crafters. With the tokens, they're just going to sack a token. And probably... 
an Angrath. That's my guess. Let's try that out. This is probably a bad match. Anything with lifelink, like we're gonna grind them out quick with some damage. But the lifelink makes the math a bit tricky. I'm gonna keep this hand. We can't play Hunted Witness on one. But I like these cards. They always have landing on one. Here I wanna hit a land, so play Dusk Legion. Get Taskmaster next turn if need be. So here... I'm just gonna play out the Taskmaster. We won't block. So they could flip the landing here. We probably should have killed something to be honest. That was a bad play on my part. Flipping the landing would have been... Uh, oh, they have Blaffling in as well. So they're going to get rid of the Aeors off Enforcer. So here... I want to get rid of the lifelink stuff. If don't draw land, I'm just going to concede this game. Yeah. I want to demo the deck a bit more, and this matchup's pretty rancid. I'll play another one. Welcome to those joining live. We're playing a budget black white aristocrats build. Uh, everything in the deck is uncommon or common, minus the shock lens and the dual lens. Um, so this hand is pretty slow, but we'll try it out. Still like that uh, triple combat celebrant hand. Opponent did mulligan. Playing out Memorial on one's not bad. Okay, so mono red. Uh, here, I like using the Zealot first. Or it might be something else. Okay, so we got Vraska. Just to see what we draw. If we could get like another one drop for next turn. Opponent might have Shock. Could be a couple of things. Mono red most likely if they run it winning SCG. Yeah. So via Shino. So I actually probably will just go Angrath next turn. I want to save this till we get both enforcers out so we can start putting counters on them. Okay. That's interesting. So they're playing a mass. Okay, so I actually like that play better because we can double two drop here. Come on. And then we'll just play Angrath, minus it, and then uh, start attacking in. They'll have to double block. Okay, 
Red Horde Butcher with his board states not doing much. Okay, so we have that anyways. Out of room to store my trophies. Uh, so here, let's just pass the turn. We can start making some pretty big threats. Minus this, play Angrath with the menace. Combat celebrant would be really good here. This card's just pretty bad. Like unless you go dedicated aggro, but it gets outclassed so quickly. Hunted Witness is nice as well. So minus Vraska here. I'm good at killing, but I don't always enjoy it. Play out Angrath. And you can see with this board state, if we have a combat celebrant out, it does quite a bit. I desire is your head. So here we'll attack in with a couple of things. See what they want to trade off. I want to try to get these a little bit higher in power so then we can start picking off multiple things. So this looks like some sort of budget deck if they're playing murder. So we're going to get rid of the Dreadhorde Butcher here. Has more upside. Okay, so Dreadhorde Butcher. I've suffered worse. It's fine, Vraska's not really gonna do much on this board state. I'm just pass the turn. If you want it, fight for it. So this, this, this. I'm cool if they want to trade some stuff off the Oligarch, because then we'll get the Flyers in. I'm making this a 4-4, they pretty much will lose two creatures. So they'll double block here. Probably gonna get rid of the Reaver only because of the two toughness. Everything else trades well. I don't care about the extra point of damage. I'm just gonna pass the turn here. We don't have really... Uh, probably bring the Oligarch back to hand. Or I'm gonna wait a turn. I'm gonna attack with the Zealot this turn. I'll just attack like that. They may be incentivized to kill the Zealot, but then I'll bring it back to my hand. Perfect. I'll just get a card draw off it. In the event they play more mass, I'll get rid of the zombie. And this is why I liked Angrath in this build, because you have a lot of these small creatures. If we could ever get the death touchers. I just want to get some more action, so play this out again. And that's where Memorial to Folly is really good. We just get to like rebuy these card draws. I think the opponent's dead. Yeah. 
They would have got rid of that, attacked with everything they couldn't block. Uh, so against this deck, we want Moments of Craving. Uh, pretty much it. I like the deck otherwise. Conclave Tribunal is probably a bit too slow, as well as Plague Crafter. Just get rid of Plague Crafters. Probably just go with that. Like the game would have been over a lot quicker had we had, um, what's it called? Uh, Combat Celebrant. Uh, so it's a little awkward here. Because we really can't play that out till turn four. But Ministrant's really good. Okay, so that gives us Zealot to play on too. They do have the Dreadhorde Butcher. Does this have Trample? Just Haste. Okay, Cruel Celebrant's nice here. So I'm going to... Probably blah. Uh, no, I'll probably take the damage and then just mortify it next turn. We're gonna take three damage anyways, but I want to get it off the table before it can kill Cruel Celebrant. This is more of an aggro draw from them. And Banehound. So I'll pass the turn here. If we draw another white source, we can Cruel Celebrant and Double Hunted Witness. Just mortify this. They're going to get three damage in, but it's fine. See if they go after the Legion or direct at us. That's better for us. That represents another point of life. So here we'll play out the Hunted Witness, play out the Cruel Celebrant, and I'm just going to play Memorial to Folly here since we're short the White Source. Next turn we can play both of these. Have this die, bring it back with Folly. We're in a good spot. This is much better how the game would go. Okay, so they Lightning Strike. Effectively gained us four life, three from that, one plus that. If they want to attack, we'll trade off here. Uh, so the questions... I think I'm just going to play the Hunted Witness this turn, and then get back Cruel Celebrant. Like, Cruel Celebrant on this board state is going to do great for us. And it's unlikely they play Cryocarnarium because their stuff's so small. And this is just what I love, just constantly recycling your creatures. We got card draws by bringing back Dust Legion Zealots. We got Memorial bringing back Cruel Celebrant. Orzhov Enforcer is another great card. So here, poking for two. If we draw a land next turn, we can play both Angrath and Orzhov Enforcer. Okay. Judith makes this math a little more interesting. Let's 
So I could ping one. Actually, I want to get the lifelink off the board. So I could only ping one, so I could kill another one of our creatures, but it can't kill Cruel Celebrant, which I'm fine with. This gives us uh, two flyers. Okay, that's something interesting to play around. Burn Bright. That takes him up to 21 as well. Actually really good for us. You're just you. The only prize I desire is your head. So they actually can't block the cruel celebrant either. I wanna keep the hunted witness back to try to kill them so we can start getting some lifelink tokens. But they're in a tricky spot because they can't really profitably attack in. Like if they attack in with both, I'm just going to block the Judith to get it off the board. could block both. To be fair, if they decide to block both just to get Cruel Celebrant off, I'm fine with that exchange. Because it clears their board. And then we're just at a much, much more aggressive pace. Yeah, so it looks like they're going to double block here. We do have the option to play out another Angrath and make this 6 power. It would make most sense. Oh, they went after Angrath. That's wrong. Ah, I'll have you in chains next time. Cruel Under celebrants. What's going to make them lose the game? I desire is your head. Another Judith and opponent concedes. So that's pretty much the deck. Uh, you saw a good game for it, a bad game for it. Um, we're coming out with a mid-budget one, so we're going to throw in a couple more rares, a couple mythics, but not like a full tier, uh, like 20 plus rare deck. Um, that'll be in the next couple days, and then by the end of the week we'll have the non-budget version, and I'll do the full write-up on uh, the Arena subreddit. Um, if you ever want to chat about decks, brews, anything like that, I'm MTG underscore Joe 2, the number 2. At, on Twitter, um, but it's MTG underscore Joe on Reddit as well. I'm frequently in the new player builds. I'm happy to do brews or stuff like that, or just drop a comment in any of the videos. Uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribing is a free and easy way to show your support. And we'll, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up today. Uh, thanks for those who tuned in live, and uh, we'll do it again soon. Have a great one.